Hey, what's up YouTube? Houston here. Look, I know some of you all may be trying to do the uh, Credit Karma hack, right? And the Credit Karma hack is what you use to remove like collections off of your account and stuff like that. And the thing about it is, I'm going to explain what it is, but I'm going to tell you guys, it may not be the best thing to do. Okay, especially with dealing with credit karma. I made a previous vi video telling y'all how they take advantage of people in terms of what they do for you. It may not be in your best benefit. All right, but I'm explaining it to you. So you go to credit karma, say you click on your transunion file. You click on your transunion file, you go to disputes. So you don't want collections, you don't want medical bills. What you want to do, you want to click on derogatory remarks, right? So when you click on derogatory remark, that's when you basically saying that I, I'm not associated with this debt. All right. Now, again, a lot of people are having success with it and they're having uh, these items coming off of their credit within 24 to 48 hours. All right. Again, with credit karma showing this stuff, right? You're thinking that, wow, 24 hours, my credit score done bumped up 50 points, 80 points. So you're looking as, wow, I got a good credit score. So now, Credit Karma, you went from, a, just say you was at a 580. You went from a 580 up to a 690, okay? Just say, just say they bump you up 110 points over these derogatory marks, right? So, in your perspective, you're like, wow, my credit's good on my TransUnion file, all right? So what ends up happening, and I need you all to understand this. Remember the previous video, if you haven't seen the video, uh, I'll put the link below, all right? But in the previous video, I told you all that Vantage Score, which is what Credit Karma uses. Credit Karma uses TransUnion, uh, which is three score, okay? Your Vantage Score, what it does, it picks up data faster than with your FICO score, okay? Now, here's where I've been telling you all that Credit Karma plays the switch or rule on you. So, what ends up happening, and you need to understand this. Say that you decide you want to go, now you thinking that, wow, my credit score is a 690, almost 700. I'm going to go get a car loan, okay? Now, what Credit Karma is doing, they may say, you, go, you can get approved for this Chase credit card, right? After your credit score that went up within the past 24 to 48 hours, Credit Karma said, oh, you can apply for this uh, Chase credit card, or you can apply for this uh, Discover card, or a Bank of America card. And here's the problem with that. All of those cards are FICO 8 scores. FICO 8 scores, right? So with your Chase, they pull your TransUnion and your Experian, right? Bank of America is your experience FICO A, all right? Discover will more likely pull either your Equifax FICO A or they may pull your experience FICO A, okay? Now, they're depending on the region of the country there, all right? Now, this is what you need to pay attention to. So, they're telling you that you can get approved for these credit cards. So, you apply for them. Now you get denied. So you're scratching your head like, hey, how come these cards are, are, are I'm not being approved for them? Well, again, like I said, it's because your Vantage score, FICO score, it takes them anywhere for data to change anywhere from 30 up to 30 days, 28 to 30 days for data to change, right? Now, that's not the only issue that you may have, all right? The second issue that may happen, all right? Like I said, you're going to get a, you're trying to get a car loan or you're trying to buy a house or whatever because you're thinking that, hey, I got this good credit score. Now, the second issue that's happening here, all right, when removing these elections and stuff, all right, the credit bureaus, they haven't had a chance to reach out to the creditors. What the credit bureaus did they just verify that, okay, this person says that this data isn't mine. But remember, the credit bureaus have up to 30 days. Actually, they haven't even went back to where in the CARES Act, it gave them 45 days of response, all right? 
and you're doing it electronically. So by you doing it electronically to challenge this information, what's end up happening, you're throwing away your legal rights of challenge. Okay, so that means that if they come back after that 30, 45 days and says, hey, the collection company verified that this information is accurate. All right. Now, here's the thing where you can get the credit bureaus at because most of the time where they said verify date or updated credit file, they do not put that date there. So by that, you have a right to challenge them, but you have to challenge it with the CF, okay? Because they did not do a thorough investigation. All they doing is taking data for you from a creditor, okay? Now, in terms of the creditor, understanding which creditor, are they taking it from the original creditor, this data, or are they taking it from the collection company? Now, if they taking it from the collection company, the situation be, may be that, hey, did they actually purchase this de debt or was it actually assigned, okay? Now, in reference to uh, charge-offs, let me help you understand something about charge-offs. The reason that I continue to tell people, if you have a charge-off under $1,000, I would probably try to pay it off in full, all right? So that way my FICO won't pick it up, all right? It's Trust me, because a lot of people try to challenge a charge off. And what it is, is that when they challenge the charge off, most people, when they do it electronically, it'll, it'll come back verified. That's all that's going to come back. It's not going to do anything else. Because all the credit bureaus is what I've been telling you all along. All the credit bureaus are going to say, is the name the same? Is the address the same? And they're only looking at maybe the first four to five numbers of the account or the last four or five numbers of the account. So these are the same things that the collection company, they don't have the full account and they're not looking at the last activity date. Okay. So this is the reason why I tell you guys do not dispute through credit karma because they can actually hurt you. All right. Because once that account pops back on, now you have to Technically, because you already challenged it, when you try to go back and challenge it with the credit bureaus, what they do because they gave an assignment, a signed number on this, they will, they will, excuse me, they will ignore it. Okay, basically is what they're going to do. Saying that we just recently verified that. All right, but they did not take the proper steps to verify. So that's the reason you have to go through CLP. Now, in reference to this, um. Credit Karma credit hat, does it work? Absolutely, yes. It will remove those negative accounts off of your credit file. However, you have to understand, it's only gonna influence your Vantage score temporarily, okay, until the thorough investigation. Now, there is a piece of case law that some people have been putting in their files saying that they don't own the account, they have no association with the account and stuff like that. And the credit bureaus look at that as well. Now, will that keep the account from going back on your credit file? Absolutely not, absolutely not. Again, because when the credit bureaus, they're verifying name, the address, and the account number, okay? That's what they're looking at in terms of the data feed from it, who's furnishing the data and stuff like that. They're not actually taking that into con in consideration because they would actually be able to look at the last activity date. That's one of the most important things that most collection company or these, uh, not only collection company, but even the people that do the credit repair, they don't know. They don't know when was the last activity of the account. Okay, because if they knew the last activity of the account, then they can actually start looking at the statutes of it. And in terms of how long had this account been in charge off status. So in terms of also when looking at in charge off status, again, if you want to challenge it on a charge off status, then what you m must do, you have to file a complaint with the CFPB. But another thing that you also have to do is if you're not able to pay, say it's a $10,000 charge off, 
then you would have to do a 1099 C, a cancellation of debt. Letting them know that, hey, I cannot satisfy this debt. Now, since they already charged it off, the credit card comes and basically said that, hey, we gave you $10,000. You didn't pay it back, right? So they took the loss. You have to write it off on your taxes, which I made in another video. But the thing about it, understanding that this credit karma hack, does it work? Yes. Okay. It does work. Does it work all the time? No. Should you use it? It's totally up to you. But just understand that it's going to influence your vantage score the fastest. The only way that it may have a bigger impact on the FICO score is after that 30 day, 28 to 30 day update on it. Now, if you want to see what's actually happening while you challenge this through Credit Karma in terms of had it been actually removed or updated in your FICO score, click the link in the description and get your real FICO score. So that way you can actually see had that count been removed. And you will actually see when was the last uh, time if you challenged it, when was the actual date that the credit bureau last time uh, updated the account. All right. So if you have any questions about personal credit funding, business credit funding, click the link in the description and schedule one-on-one -on -one consultation. Thank you.